medications. These are the medications in an exam, which was otherwise unremarkable. His imaging has shown uh, interval sac growth from this past November to recently in May. Next slide, please. This is that imaging. We can see a CTA, the arterial phase on the left. Uh, at the superiormost portion of the stent, we can see contrast in the sac outside of the endograft. And on the right, we can see the delayed phase, the evolution of that contrast. So these findings in combination with interval enlargement of the sac are suspicious for a type 1A endole. So the plan was to take him for angiography. And next slide. If we identified uh, type 1A on angiography to take a guide cath, position it at the optimum of that type 1A endole, cannulate it with a microcatheter system and do further angiography to interrogate the endole and if the size, the shape, and the flow was amenable to embolize it uh, with a combination of coil or uh, liquid embolic. I'm going to show you what we've done so far. So the first thing we did to get down the arch, we, uh, we put it in an oblique and we actually used just a Benson wire and that flopped us down. The first run we did with a Sarah radial uh, and this is proximal to the renals and you can see if you look at the wrist here zoom out a tiny bit we have a 5-6 Terumo slender sheath again this allows us to put in our 6 French guide catheter which we had in at one point they're not showing the rest um, you got to pan up a little yeah, bit just pan out a little there bit yeah, there you go, you go. and then now we just have a Sarah radial one of the great things about the Sarah radial is it does allow you to do a flush angiogram we did 30 for 30 20 for 40 with that catheter no problem get great angi angiograms with that um, and we don't see it very clearly we thought maybe there was some lumbar filling it a little bit higher up um, and so what Rahul's trying to do now is try to probe the proximal seal to see if we can sneak a microcatheter down uh, and, and demonstrate it a little bit better. But, you know, CT is definitely more sensitive at detecting endoleak than angiography in, 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 in many cases. It doesn't necessarily tell you where it's coming from. Uh, but we assumed, based on the imaging so far, that it was a type 1A. Aaron, would you consider using a fusion of image to kind of uh, in a coronal reconstruction of the CT to guide you where the leak is and potentially help or but potentially will not help at all. A any comments on that? So we thought about it. So the problem is, is that you don't really see it well on the arterial phased image. You only see it really on the delay. Um, and so I, it's, and it's hard to even on the, on the CT scan to really identify exactly where the leak is coming from. Um, sorry, I'm just, I think I have it. I'm trying to spin this a little bit. Um, so it's a little hard to identify exactly where it's coming from, the origin of it. I think we got it. So It looks like there's a wire now somewhere either behind the sack, uh, behind the seal, uh, going into the so sack as possible. Sack. It's hard to say from this projection. We've been probing around this area for a little while. Um, one of the, on the nice things about a type well, 1A endoleak or radial it. approach, in my view, is that you get a lot more pushability than using a reverse curve catheter from uh, from below, uh, so I think it's advantageous in terms of type two endoleaks. It can be more challenging. We have done some. If you're not able to identify it from a transarterial or a direct transarterial approach, would you consider a sac puncture using CT spin to guide your needle to the approximate location you see the leak on your diagnostic CT, and then see if you can cannulate it that way? Absolutely. I, I you know, we typically try to do transarterial before either a direct sac or even a transcable sac puncture. Um, and in some endoleaks, the transcable may be advantageous depending on where uh, the proximity of the cava is to the sac itself. Um, I, think, uh, I think this case is, is just one of those cases where the endoleak is not easy to see. Creating a, it's an O1, you know, it's a microcatheter. So if we create a little tiny, if we can get in successfully and then, and then embolize it, then we would be able to treat it. And it would be easier to treat in, in theory than if it was a, uh, gigantic uh, endo leak, which we see sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this case, we um, we're using the Sarah. We switch back to the Sarah because we like the the way the Sarah opposes the wall. The same way that the Sarah opposes the wall when we do celiac and mesenteric intervention, uh, the wall of the aorta it, it tends to sit very well uh, either either against the wall or with a slight downward angulation, as you can see here. Uh, but uh, this is a Lantern 150. It's a two point. Uh, 025 microcatheter, and we have a fathom wire through it. Uh, this, we picked this because we weren't sure what coils we were going to use if we got in. We have a lot of different large coils that we would use to fill the sac. We wanted something that would be uh, compatible with both the penumbra coils, uh, the interlock coils, the CX coils, 
Onyx. and also Onyx. Uh, because we tend to combine liquid and coils in these complex endoleaks. Right after we did the angiograms, we were both realizing that this is probably not gonna, gonna work today. So we think that we'll try for a few more minutes. Um, I don't think we have a lot of other catheters that we would think that would work better than this. Uh, so we'll, we'll probe around for a little longer. And if we can get in, that would be great. If not, then we'll talk to him about uh, doing a sac puncture. Um, he's a little bit older than, uh, than most people. I, he's 86, so I'm not sure. You know, we have to sort of weigh the risk benefit for him at this point. But again, that's why we start with transarterial therapy, uh, because it's lower risk. I think we have to mention it before we go by. A type 1A endoleak typically we think is a lack of a proximal seal. I know that we were having difficulty finding it, but can you talk about the decision to try to embolize your type 1A endoleak? rather than improving your seal in this patient? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great point. I mean, we, we, we look at the distance of the renals and whether we think that's uh, feasible. I mean, based on the, uh, the scan that he had before, we thought that maybe this migrated slightly, uh, just given the configuration. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see the image. Uh, let me see if I can put it up for you. We're not very close to the renals, so my guess is that this migrated. It probably could be cuff. Um, and maybe that's what we'll do. So we're going to try, you know, we, we'll try the least invasive uh, approach first. We'll have a discussion whether we want to try a sac puncture. And then if not, then we'll, we'll try to at least consider maybe a cuff um, and see if that works or reline the whole thing. It's always interesting, you know, always whenever there's an endo leak, there's typically an inflow vessel and an outflow vessel. And a lot of the times we see that when you treat a type 2 endo leak or what you thought was a type 2 endo leak, it actually ends up pressurizing the sac because you're getting rid of the outflow. And now the influence of kind of really pressurizing it well. And we've seen that where we embolize a type 2 in the leak and the patient comes back with aggressive growth. Sometimes if you wait on a case like this, it will declare itself one way or the other. Yeah, and that's probably what we're going to end up having to do is just wait for him to declare himself. I mean, at this point, I think we're just sort of wasting time. I don't think we're going to find it. Um, so I think we might just call it because we, we were able to create a leak, get the wire next to it, but I, mean, I couldn't get the catheter to track. Uh, so that being said, um, unless there's another question from the panel, yeah. <laughs> um, I think we're pro probably going to just call it.